Hello friends, this video on probability part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 17. Learn a new topic called Bayes theorem. Please pay some attention here because it's a very critical topic. Before we even understand this theorem, let's understand why do we need this theorem. So let's suppose we have two jars and with these jars we have some balls. It has some red balls and green balls. It, this guy also has some red balls and some green balls. Now one and you hide this. You hide this in some, you put this everything in some dark box. Right? This is not visible now. This is all not visible. Now from this you take out one ball. You don't know which box you are taking out because this is there in the bigger bigger box which is also hidden you don't know which box you are choosing and you took out one ball now you want to find and you saw that the ball you got is red let's suppose now you want to find that probability that it is drawn from box one let's suppose this guy is box one jar one and this guy is jar two so probability that it is, it is drawn from jar 1 or jar 2. So you define the probability that this is drawn from jar 1. How do you do this? Till now what we know? We know that this is drawn from jar 1 let's suppose. And this and we find the probability it is red or green. But now this jar itself is hidden. And you took out one ball and you found that ball is red. And you define the probability that it is from jar 1. So the question is toppled now, it's other way around, right? So such kind of scenarios we solve using Bayes theorem. So I'll take you to the Bayes theorem. So if you see this theorem uses that partition of sample space from funda which we have learned in the past two slides. So what we do is we partition the sample space and let's suppose these are my partition sample events and they all uh, pairwise disjoint and they are exhausted then if you have to find the probability of event some event given given this, the given this uh, thing a there is nothing but probability of e i into probability of a given i divided by this thing and this thing is nothing but probability of a i think right so in case of uh, the same thing you have two jars right you have some red and green balls and red and green balls here, right? So probability of, uh, and this is let's suppose jar 1, this case jar 2, probability of uh, getting this from jar 1, given it is red, is nothing but probability of getting red, given it is from jar 1, into probability of jar 1 right jar 1 jar 1 divided by the probability of red please note this both are same actually so you have to find the probability of jar 1 given it is red is nothing but probability of red given jar 1 into probability of jar 1 given it if you see it is actually all the same because you try to prove this also it's very simple this guy if you see is nothing but probability of j1 and red by probability of red correct right hand side if you see nothing but probability of red and jar1 into probability of jar1 by this guy will becomes probability of red and jar1 by probability of jar1 right and probability of red i'm writing here this gets cancelled if you see both are same both are exactly same Right? So proving this is not a big thing actually. So the only thing is what we are doing is till now we used to find probability of red given jar 1. Right? You have, you have two jars, the probability that jar 1 is selected. Now you define that the balls you get is red. These kind of things I used to do. Now I am doing the other way around. I got one ball and the ball is red. I want to find whether it is from jar 1 or jar 2. Right? So this kind of probability I am learning it new. So for this, I'm using actually the same formulas. What I'm doing is I'm finding the probability of getting red given jar 1, multiplying this word, 
probability of jaw 1 by probability of n. And that was the base theorem is. Right? So, it is not that difficult. Don't get uh, scared here. I'll spend some more time here. So, till now, what we have been doing is, we had two jars. Right? Jar 1 and jar 2. And we are told that, find the probability, and this has some red green balls, red green balls. I've been told that jar 1 is selected. Find the probability of getting, probability of getting some red balls given jar 1. Till now, I have been doing this. Now what I'm saying is instead of doing this, this guy is everything is in the box and I don't see which jar I'm taking out. I took out a ball and the ball was red. I am now find, supposed to find probability that the ball is taken out from jar 1 given it is red. Correct? Both are different. Till now I have been doing this. Now I'll do this. For this, if you see what I'm doing this, I'm just multiplying this guy with probability of J1 and dividing with probability of R1. If you see, that's what I'm doing, right? So, this guy multiplying with J1 and to topple it, what I'm doing is, so if you see, if you don't even remember this formula, if you feel this formula is complex for you, what you can do is this this way, probability of jar 1 for red is nothing but, you say like this, probability of red given jar 1, you multiply this guy with probability of jar 1, right? And then you multiply this guy with probability of red. See what I've done? You topple this first. Since it is here by J1, you multiply with J1 and you multiply with R. That's what is the base theorem. Because this guy ends of day, this becomes P. See this guy is P actually. So let's learn some terminologies using base theorem. This events, all these events are called hypothesis. The probability of this event is called priori probability of hypothesis. And the conditional probability, that is probability of E given A is called posteriori probability of hypothesis. Let's take some examples of the base theorem. So a bag contains four green and four red. Another bag contains uh, two reds and six greens. So I have this two bags, right? So one bag is four green and four red. So I'll make this as B1, bag one. The second bag is contains two red and six green. This is bag. One of the two bags is selected at random and the ball is drawn, which is found to be red. So we don't know which ball is, bag is selected. We just close the eyes and took one bag. And we found that out of these, we found that one ball is selected and this guy ball is red. Find the probability that it is drawn from first bag. So uh, probability that it is red, right? Given it is red, I have to find that it is drawn from first bag. This is how to find, correct? I have to find the probability of the box being red, given that the ball I found is red. Correct? This ball I found and I was told that this guy is red. I have to find the probability that it is drawn from first box. This is something but I told you topple this guy. So this becomes probability of red given B1. You multiply with probability of B1 here. You divide with probability of R here. Right? Probability of B1 you multiply R. Probability of R you divide. Correct? So, Probability of R given B1 is what? So if this box is given to me, I'm told that I'm getting it from this box. What is the probability of getting R? 1, 2, 3, 4, there are 4 R's. By total number of balls in this B1, 8 balls. So this guy is my probability of getting R given I am told that I'm getting it from box 1. Now probability of getting box 1 is what? 1 by 2. Because you can choose box 1, box 2, any of this box, right? Probability of getting R now. So you can get R from this guy, you can get R from this guy also, right? So if you want to get R from this guy, what you will get? 2 by total balls, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 2, 8. This becomes 2 by 8 into 1 by 2 because you select this box plus you select the box B2. And the probability of getting it is 1 by 4 by 8, 4 red by total number of balls. Correct? And if you solve this, what you get is 
two L. See, logically, if you see, you have to select. You can select box one, you can select box two, right? The probability of this guy is one by two, so this guy is also one by two. The moment you select box one, you select red or green. Getting red in box one is four by eight, that is one by two. Green is also one by two, four by eight. In box two, if you select, you can also select red and green now. In this, selecting red is two by one, two, three, four, five, six, two by eight, two by eight, and green is six by eight. That is my probability chart. In this case, probability of red given B1, you make B1 as reference, probability of red is one by two, right? One by two is four by eight. Into probability of B1, probability of selecting B1 is one by two, we see one by two. By probability of red, probability of red, if you see is, you get red in this, in this path and in this path. So this path will be one by two into one by two, this path, this path will be one by two into two by eight. Sorry, one by two into two by eight actually, right? So this is two by eight. Yeah, one by two into two by eight. Correct? And this will get two by eight. So that's how you solve this question. Please note, if you see this PR, in this case PR, you have to take both the scenario. This scenario of getting red and this scenario of getting red. Both the path you have to take. So if you take this path, this becomes 1 by 2 into 1 by 2. If you take this path, this becomes 1 by 2 into 2 by 8. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.